What's up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist, and I am back at it again, bringing you 40 facts for the Warhammer 40k, 30k universe. This time, we are doing yet another viewer request from the Facebook page. This time, it's by a pretty cool guy who just started, once again, collecting Warhammer figures. I just like it. It's, it's amazing how many people actually start playing Warhammer, and it's like, the more people we get in the hobby, the better it is. But anyway, he just started playing Space Marines, and he's playing the infamous Blood Ravens from the Dawn of War games. Now, Dawn of War was the first, yeah, it was, it was the first uh, 40k game that we ever played. We being me, Gershwan, and another friend, and man, we just had a great time in those games. I remember, I believe it was the, uh, it couldn't have been Dawn of War 1, it must have been Dawn of War 2 when the Necrons came out, and this guy, our friend, would just send swarms of scarabs just coming at us, and it'd be hilarious, because like, Gersh's squigots would be there, and his killer cans, and they're getting mauled and destroyed by freaking scarabs. Anyway, it was fun. Uh, but enough blabbering, let's get on to the uh, lore on the Blood Ravens chapter master, Gabriel Angelos. Gabriel Angelos, just like many other Blood Ravens, was born on the planet of Cyrene, from whence the chapter often draws its neophytes from. He had grown up on Cyrene with the Blood Ravens librarian, Isidore Achaeus, whom he trusted above all other battle brothers in the chapter, mainly because of their childhood friendship. Gabriel was an accomplished leader of his peers before he even rose to his teen years. He passed the blood trial sent by the Blood Raven chaplains as an aspirant. Many years later, with an entire company of Blood Ravens under his command, Gabriel returned to Cyrene, this time to preside over the blood trials and to recruit new members into the chapter. However, Gabriel found something very, very wrong with the trials, and he had no choice but to cut them short. He quickly returned to his strike cruiser and sent out a coded message out into the system. Within months, ships of the Inquisition and the Imperial Navy appeared over Cyrene, executing an exterminatus order, bombarding it for a week straight with cyclonic torpedoes until nothing on the planet remained alive. All records of this incident and Gabriel's message to the Inquisition have been sealed, but Gabriel himself carries the guilt of his actions to him to this day, particularly during the battles on the planet of Tartarus. It was on this forsaken world of Tartarus that Gabriel was to undergo a true test of his limits, as he had to both stall an unstoppable orc invasion long enough to evacuate the Imperial citizens from the planet, while simultaneously seeking out and eradicating the forces of the Alpha Legion's Chaos Space Marines on the planet, led by Chaos Lord Bale and the Chaos Sorcerer, Sindri Mir. The forces of Chaos were searching for an ancient artifact known as the Maledictum, and the Sorcerer, Sindri, managed to corrupt Gabriel's longtime friend, the chapter librarian, Isidore Achaeus, into betraying his fellow ravens. Gabriel, haunted by his guilty conscience, had no choice but to execute Isidore for heresy, and he went on to lead the Blood Ravens against Chaos. Thankfully for him, Lord Bale was defeated in a single duel, and eventually, Gabriel also helped defeat Sindri when he used the Maledictum to transform himself into a demon prince of Chaos Undivided. However, after his death, Gabriel destroyed the Maledictum after the battle, thinking to eradicate the Chaos threat posed by the artifact once and for all, but instead, the destruction of this artifact released a greater demon of corn from its prison. The Eldar Farseer, Maka, of the Baeltan craft world, had aided in fighting the demon after she had foreseen the events to come. This Farseer had warned him not to destroy the Maledicta, but he had no choice and he proceeded to smash it with his weapon, God Splitter a demon hammer given to him by the Ordo Malleus, Inquisitor Mordecai Toth, who also had arrived on Tartarus 
to seek out the source of the chaos corruption that was affecting the world. How God Splitter is said to be forged from the fragments of an Eldar avatar of Cain, and so it is a potent psychically charged weapon that was used against the demonic entities of the warp. Unfortunately, the demon had escaped Tartarus before ensuring the warp storm trapped the blood ravens on the planet. Now he has vowed to defeat the new threat of chaos that he himself had unleashed upon the galaxy. After the warp storm subsided, Angelos traveled to the world of Ray's paradise, where he attempted to conduct the blood trials to recruit neophytes for his chapter. At first all seemed routine, except he had strange premonitions of an Eldar invasion, and he was right. Eldar rangers from the Baotan craft world conducted multiple hit and run attacks, focusing exclusively on the psychers of the Blood Ravens and the potential psyker neophytes among the Blood Trial aspirants. Gabriel met with the Farseer Maka once more. She revealed to him that the Eldar had killed the psychers to prevent the breaking of Lysanthro's shield, an Eldar artifact that generated the illusion of a large Eldar psychic presence on the planet. This would prevent the awakening of the Necrons hidden under the surface of this world. Yes, this world was also an ancient Necron tomb world, as they would slumber as long as they believed that their ancient foes among the Eldar still dominated the galaxy. In a rare display of trust, Angelos attempted to stop the budding conflict between his blood ravens and the Eldar, but it all was for nothing when a space skirmish destroyed the spirit pool of the Dark Reaper aspect. This psychic scream of the Eldar sent its souls lost to the hunger of Slanesh, and it shattered Lysanthro's shield, allowing the slumbering Necrons to awaken. Gabriel had no choice but to order the planet destroyed via Exterminatus. Angelos took his surviving aspirants and made way for the world known as Lorne V. When Gabriel arrived, he made contact with the single Eldar survival of the battle, Farseer Taldir, who had been asking to meet him since teleporting into the Blood Raven's battle barge. Ignoring accusations of heresy leveled against him by Captain Alantis of the Ninth Company, she convinced Angelos to allow her to take him in a small squad of Blood Ravens in a rip into the Eldar webway. There she hoped to find the last legendary blade of Vol and to use it against the waking Necrons. Angelos agreed, ignoring yet again accusations of heresy against him, and he escorted the Farseer to Arcadia. Here they become engaged in a murderous battle with the chaotic space marine warband known as the Prodigal Sons and their leader, the infamous Chaos Sorcerer, Ahriman. The ancient Thousand Suns Librarian also wanted the Blade of Vol, but for himself, and only the desperate efforts of Taldir and Angelos, combined with a timely intervention by a troop of Harlequins, managed to force the Sorcerer to retreating. Both his and Taldir's surprise, Angelos was given the Blade by the Eldar Harlequin. Returning to Lord V, Angelos provided the blade in turn to Farseer Maka, who managed to destroy the Necrons awakening on that world completely, using a potent psychic ritual and the infamous Blade of All. With their objective completed, the Eldar quickly departed, and their Farseer was not heard from or seen afterward. Gabriel then continued his command as captain. The Eldar and the Harlequins refer to Gabriel as Gabriel of the Hidden Heart, and they see him as a symbol of hope for the Eldar in the form of a human, after all of his accomplishments fighting alongside the Eldar. During the invasion of the Aurelian subsector by a splinter feat of Leviathan Tyranids, Captain Angelos was on board the Blood Raven's battle barge Litany of Fury in the nearby sector. Diverting the battle barge to Aurelia, Angelos advised his friend battle captain Davian Thule on how to fight the Xenos. 
Unfortunately, as the Litany of Fury was nearing the subsector, the Tyranid hive mind reached out and threw the starship off course, also killing most of the navigators and astropaths on board with a potent psychic attack. Angelo sent out one final message before the battle barge moved out of range, thought to be forever trapped in the warp. Angelos' message did give the Blood Raven Force Commander a chance to strike a deadly blow to the Tyranid Hive Fleet. Fortunately, the Blood Ravens somehow managed to emerge from the warp and made it into orbit of Typhon Primaris and engaged the Hive Fleet there. The Litany of Fury launched drop pod after drop pod to hold off the Tyranid Force's planet side, while Angelos himself joined a small team in the strike against the massive beast controlling the Tyranids. This attack was successful and the High Fleet was splintered, ending their dominant threat in that sector of the galaxy. In the re-emergence of the planet Aurelia, Angelos directed and ordered a small strike team to combat the Black Legion, which was being led by Argas the Pillager and the returned Chaos Champion, Elephas, the inheritor of the Wordbearers. However, Gabriel was condemned by Captain Apollo Diomedes of the Blood Raven's Honor Guard, who was at the time unaware of the chaotic corruption within the Blood Ravens, especially their current chapter master, Azaria Kairos, which had been brought upon the chapter by the greater demon of Nurgle, Ulcair. After the Blood Ravens repulsed the assault by Argas and his legion, Angelos once again personally led the assault against the Black Legion on Aurelia and urged his strike team to eliminate Alephus and the Greater Demon. He was seen at the front of the assault against these chaotic warriors. After the defeat of Alkir, the corrupted chapter master and their chief librarian, Azaria Kairos declared Gabriel a traitor and initiated a vicious hunt for the captain of the Third Company and his forces. A bloody chapter civil war ensued, one that engulfed the entire Aurelian subsector at its peak. Kairos eventually openly declared his loyalty to Chaos and ascended to become a demon prince. However, Kairos' ascension was far from complete, allowing a strike team of Blood Ravens to destroy the Towers of Offering and thus weaken Kairos enough to harm him. After a long and difficult battle, the demon was slain upon the dead world of Cyrene, and in its plan was also thwarted, but at a great cost to the Loyalist forces. Most of Gabriel's men were slain during the battle, and Gabriel himself was viciously struck down by Kairos. After the battle to defeat him was over, Captain Apollo Diomedes retrieved Gabriel's body, only to find that he was still alive. He was able to call off the Inquisition's exterminatus of all the remaining inhabitant worlds in the Aurelian subsector, to their luck. Afterwards, Gabriel's broken body was repaired with extensive cybernetic augmentation, and he was elevated to become the new chapter master of the Blood Raven. Now that was the lore basically up to uh, Dawn of War 2 and uh, Retribution, that's the one. So that's all, hit, that's all we know so far. Now it is confirmed that this beastly mofo is going to be back in Dawn of War 3. Now we don't know exactly what that story will entail, but man does he look back with a vengeance. He's got this uh, Terminator armor and he's still wielding his mighty hammer, God Splitter. I just love the name of that hammer. It looks amazing and I can't wait for Dawn of War 3. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this. Uh, can you guys not wait to play Dawn of War 3? If you did play the previous uh, Dawn of Wars, well, what did you like about them? What did you hate about them? And uh, I guess that's all I got for you guys. Thank you guys for being awesome. Thank you Facebook subscriber whose name I forget right now <laughs> for uh, picking the Blood Ravens as your army to begin your journey into 40k with. Uh, his lore was pretty amazing and hopefully that gives you inspiration to field him in battle. And uh, that's all I've got guys. Thanks for getting us to 50k subscribers. Uh, we've got a few days left for the art contest so make your submissions to the Facebook page. 
And also, once we hit a thousand likes on our Facebook page, there's going to be yet another giveaway. So stay tuned for that, guys. And as always, I am the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I am signing out. Oh, <laughs>